Stax. Hey, what's up? Got another. Got another. Uh, got another question um, yeah. about investing in stocks and things like that. So I want to see uh, who's your current lineup of stocks and why did you select those stocks? Oh man. Um, so I've got a bunch of them. I'm actually trying to pull some. Uh, some stuff up so I can can see. So, um, I've got things from a bunch of different sectors, from like uh, real estate. I'm a, I'm a big fan of a uh, company called Realty Income, uh, or the symbol is O. They are a they own a lot of buildings for businesses that that we frequent all the time, especially if you think during the middle of COVID, um, mm-hmm. businesses that have been essential through, throughout. So uh, they own the leases for businesses such as Walmart and Sam's Club and BJ's and Home Depot, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, uh, Walgreens, CVS, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, they're, so they're, they're a steady, solid company. They also pay a monthly dividend, which I think is really cool, um, which is just paying money to shareholders because you own uh, those shares. So they, they give a portion of the profits back to their shareholders. So that's that's an example of one that, that I like. Um, I'm a fan of like uh, Disney and Microsoft. Um, and, uh, a lot of different, different companies that are in, in my lineup. Um, but I just kind of went off the top of my head. What was the R one you said? The Realty? Oh, Realty Income. That's, uh, R-E-A-L-T-Y Income. And their, their symbol is O. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. So how interesting is that? I mean, you can buy into this and this stock, granted with COVID things have been going down, but um, sure. you can see as, as it's, it's a way of diversifying your income, right? Is that why right. you did that? So you can have a little bit of that exposure? Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and they're, um, so to kind of give some perspective when times were really bad uh, during the great recession they had a 94 percent occupancy such as the ones that i named they still were they still were making money they still were open um and and being great great tenants so yeah i see you've got it pulled up wow and this is just showing you the the website um, yeah, they've had dividend increases for the past uh, 26 years. Wow! Uh, every year, so they're a dividend aristocrat, which just means that they've increased uh, their dividends at least once every year for the past 25 years. So, really, so what, really solid company. What's your strategy like? How do you pick stocks? I know you're doing really well. Like, what's a tip you could give like someone that hasn't even bought one stock? like your strategy behind it? Um, so, so I like to look at the balance sheet. So I like to do what's called quantitative analysis first of just looking and seeing uh, the revenues, the profits. Um, I look at uh, earnings per share. I look at uh, payout ratios, which is just how much of their profits are they paying out in dividends to shareholders uh, to just get an understanding of how how the business works, what's their trends, how are they making money, but also like to do what's called qualitative analysis, which is, hey, what's the story of this business and and how how do I see them growing with time? So I'll give you I'll give you an example of how qualitative analysis is, is important. So if one were to assess a company like 
Netflix, say, five years ago, um, they would say, oh, well, they, they weren't making huge profits. The quantitative analysis wasn't phenomenal. Um, but the qualitative analysis was that they were saying, hey, we believe that linear television is, is fading away, which linear television think like back in the day of watching uh, television like Fresh Prince or Friends that comes on, on at a specific time of the week and that you are waiting to be in front of the TV to watch that show, uh, well, that's not really how people function anymore when it comes to how they consume their entertainment. Really, the things that make people say, I want to be in front of a screen are like live sports uh, or things uh, along the lines of politics where people want to know what's happening right, right then and there in that moment. Uh, so they believed that linear television was going to continually fade away and that their company wanted to be a major player in streaming. Mm -hmm. So the, the shift from linear television to streaming, well, we've seen that. So uh, Netflix five years ago was about $50 a share. Now, from what you saw on the screen that Xavier had pulled up, it's over four hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> a share. Yep. Yep. So it, it's it's had meteoric growth um, over over the past like half decade. Like if you were actually to go back a little bit further, which you've got the five year snap, and I and I know things have kind of shifted, but beginning of twenty fifteen, you you would be able to to see some of the, the mm -hmm. craziness in there. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't yeah. perfectly get it, but you, you get the drift. It's, it's, it's up and down significantly. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. And even, even during COVID of, you know, I talked with some friends when Netflix was around $306 a share in March and said, Hey, if people are going to be in their homes this, this is an opportunity for Netflix to really grow from a story standpoint of they've got a lot of content. They've got content for kids. They've got uh, content for adults. And I believe that they're going to get a lot more subscribers because there's no live sports. You know, there, there was so much programming that was limited that people would want to be entertained and, the way their model is set up, it's not huge amounts of money to have to pay to get their services, you know, on their monthly fees. So, and at that time, yeah, it was, I think it was March 15th and it was around like 306 and now it's 455. So it's gone up like 50% it's crazy. from that point. You look at the 52 week low, 252, and then the, the high 466. I mean, that's a big jump right yeah 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 the previous close 466 and yeah, the 52 week high uh, 474 actually so yeah. yeah i agree i think there's and and this is one point too that i like that you brought up um and this is one thing i want to ask you do you buy companies that you that you try to use like for instance do you buy would you invest in a netflix if you were an average person buying stock, you know, and you, and, um, and you were picking out companies, do you think it's a good strategy to pick out companies of services that you use and trust? So what I would say in general is that's not a bad idea. Um, if you, if you're using it, you've got experience with it, you know that it's a well-run company. Um, and it's, it's something that you trust. That's a good starting point to at least start doing research yeah. into the company and make a decision on, on whether or not you would like to uh, invest in that company. So I, I do have uh, companies that I own that I actually use. Um, 
and have used a lot. And then there's some where, where I haven't, but I believe in the business model. I may not be their target demographic, but like I said, I, I believe in what they're doing as a business. And so for that reason, you know, I would invest in it. So hopefully that makes some sense. No, no, that's really good. And it's funny you bring that up. Um, Cause I'm, I'm bringing up my strategy and the guys I'm rolling with uh, this 12, next 12 months. And I've heard different strategies from different people. And I know you've had a, a lot of success in this. So I love just picking your brain mm -hmm. um, and speaking to other successful entrepreneurs. And just from my um, experience and success I've had, um, I've noticed that it's good to break it down into certain kind of categories, right? Um, in a different, different type of categories. And some people do it by funds, like they'll do large cap, mid cap, mm -hmm. uh, small cap, S and P 500 index, things like that, which I think is a good strategy as well. If you have some extra cash and you're not sure about which stocks to pick, but if you are going to go stocks, I, I um, actually just recently got some advice from a, a very successful entrepreneur and it's something that I've known, but it's just kind of, you know, sometimes you hear it, but then it becomes like, oh yeah, it comes like, I know this already, but it's just, you needed to be refreshed with it. And I thought this would be good, but he likes to break it down into four different categories. He likes to break it down into like tech, mm -hmm. industrial, consumer staples, pharmaceuticals, and then energy. And so with, with that being said, here's what I'm rolling with stacks. I want your feedback. Um, okay. Tech, I'm going with Microsoft. I like Microsoft. You know, I'm in IT. I love their uh, products. Um, I like Apple too, but I feel like Microsoft is uh, a little bit uh, more affordable. And, you know, all of our users use Microsoft. And with Teams and all the things they're pushing out, I really like them. Uh, and my strategy is to pick one stock per industry. So tech, I'm going to roll with Microsoft. Industrial, I'm going to roll with Honeywell. Um, Honeywell is, is used a lot in, in the industry for a lot of different reasons, and they've been consistently uh, have a good growth. Mm -hmm. So industrial, I'm rolling Honeywell. Uh, consumer staples, I'm doing Visa, even though I'm kind of tempted to do MasterCard as well. But I think I'm just going to stick with Visa since I use Visa. Mm -hmm. And they got a great dividend. And then pharmaceutical, going Johnson & Johnson. Okay, and then energy, I'm going Duke. And all of these products I personally, I use mm -hmm. and I stand behind. So like, I like believe in the product too. Cause one thing I have to remember is when you're buying stock, you're actually buying a piece of that company, mm -hmm. you know? So like if you use Microsoft and you like Microsoft, you think Microsoft's going to be here another 50 years, it's probably a good place to put your money. If also too, you look at the parameters you're saying too, but. I'm trying to make it super basic yeah. for somebody. What do you think? What do you think about that lineup? So I, 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 lo I love the, the strategy around trying to cover uh, multiple sectors, which is good because uh, at any time, one could be doing really well and another could be doing solid and one could be doing really bad. So you're not being pinned in if a particular area is being hit really hard. Um, those are solid companies. And a thing that I always like to try to remind folks of is that just big picture, um, you, you want to look to try to invest for the long haul mm. in, in how, how you go forward in, in your investing. Um, so yes, I'm aware that there's people who do make some money doing things like day trading and swing trading uh, and so on and so forth, where they're making uh, freak, very frequent moves of buying and selling. Um, first off, you wanna be very informed if you're doing things like that. And there's a lot of people that can lose a lot of money um, employing those strategies and tactics versus what has been very tried and true is to invest with a very long time horizon going forward that uh, you can be very successful 
doing that. So, so that that's always that. an encouragement that, that I try to give people is don't necessarily look for the quick buck. Um, you you want to have something that's sustainable and can keep you over that. And, and use the power of what compound interest with time. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I love right. that, man. Right. Right. So hopefully that helps people to in, in the decision making. Yeah. And if like whoever's watching this video, if you have like a certain question on anything specific, you know, put it in the comments and we'll do our best to answer it or get the answers back to you. So, so yeah, that was good stacks. Thank you, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And one quick disclaimer that I want to make here is that do your own research. Yes. Understand why you are investing in a particular company so that you have your own conviction into why you've invested because because for me i have invested in companies and because i had a, a great conviction i understood why i was investing in it when it went down i could assess why it was going down and make a decision to say hey i'm going to add more to this position because my my reasoning for why i invested in it in the first place nothing has changed with that. So I'm going to lean in even more into this, this particular investment in this company versus, Oh, well, I just invested in it because somebody told me to. Mm, That makes sense. And it's uh, from, from experience. um, I'll give you a little story and uh, let me share my screen, but uh, beginning of the year, Facebook was down, right? It dropped. I think there were they had some some issues with uh, privacy and things like that, and it kind of made the stock go down because you know stock is driven by emotion because we're all humans, right? So, at, at when it was going down, it took a big chunk. I was like, man, I'm buying into Facebook because I know, like you said, when you have the knowledge of that company, you know about the company. So I knew Facebook. Uh, owns Instagram, Facebook owns Facebook, they own uh, WhatsApp, they just bought Oculus, which is a big VR platform, and they're buying all these things, so they're way more than a social media company. I know they're not going anywhere, and like you said, when you know that, though, when you have conviction, then you can make an educated decision in investing into that company and know there's some strategy behind it. You're not just guessing because you believe in the company, you know, what's going on. You use the platform. And so it's funny you mentioned that. Cause I think, um, around this time when it was here, uh, I was telling customers like, man, I'm buying in. They're like, man, that's, that's scary. I'm like, well, I mean, I know Facebook isn't going nowhere. I mean, they got all these platforms. They got, you know, millions and millions of users and they're, they're buying, acquiring small companies. And look, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's gone up. And, and if you look at it over time, this is just one stock, but you you know, it's making growth. So I like that you brought that up. Like believe, like, and someone told me that too, like invest in what you know, because mm-hmm. if you don't know about it, you're pro- it, not that you always make a bad investment, but you're more likely to make a better decision if you know about what you're investing in. And even if you look at some consumer staples like Nike, for instance, we were just talking about this Dex. Yep. Um, and it's funny because I love Nike shoes. Uh, I do. It's one of my favorite shoes. And I mean, they've, they've dropped down, but this is a great opportunity. I mean, look at the growth they've had. Right. Uh, and they had a huge drop. And I remember us talking about it. We're like, I can't believe Nike's this low or Microsoft is this low. And we have conviction because we know Nike owns Jordan. Nike owns a uh, Nike. Nike owns Converse. Nike owns uh, a bunch of other brands that we use, that we like, that we will keep buying. They're not going nowhere. And when, like you said, when you know the brand, you know the company, you have the conviction where you can sit and hold and not be deterred by people that tell you to do one thing because you have the research. Right, right. That's, that's the important part um, when, when looking at uh, trying to assess a company. So every graph that has been pulled up what you've noticed is there's been ups and downs yeah. in these companies. Now, the, the trend has been 
that it's steadily increased with time, which, which, what is, what does that mean? So if you've got good information and conviction about the investment decision that you're making, when it goes down, you won't harm yourself by selling as it's falling and locking in your losses uh, with, with that particular investment. Or I've, at least I've heard this said of uh, you, you, you can't get hurt on a roller coaster unless you jump off mm. while, while on it. But if you can just ride it through, uh, you, you should end up safely at the end of the ride and, and be in a good space. So, so yeah, again, hopefully that, that helps. That is trying great. To assess. Look at this roller coaster. In March, it was 67.45, right? Imagine yeah. if you sold or jumped off the roller coaster at that time. You would have yeah. uh, lost a potential gain of where it's at right now at 98.79. Right. You know, right. you don't lose money till you sell it, really. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, hopefully this, this helps. It to, does, man. Uh, and understand it. Yep. Thank that you, man. Question. No, thank you for your time, man. I know you're super busy. So, like, I think this is good. Um, just to let people know, I mean, when you're investing in stocks, you're investing into real companies, right? And if you don't right. believe in the company, you probably shouldn't be buying a stock in that. Agreed. So, to keep it simple, right? Buy the companies that you believe in. Yep. Yep. E exactly. Exactly. And the more I'm, the person who has more information overwhelmingly is going to make better decisions. So, mm. yeah. You just fed me some knowledge, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, for sure. All right.